this is an issue of uh, regulation of water, control of water and people having access to water. Water availability is not an issue, there is plenty of water, but people do not have resources, people do not have uh, sufficient energy, there are not good policies uh, so that people make good use of water. So water um, from is becoming a curse or sometimes a bane. So how we can create, uh, convert that particular resource into a useful opportunity for the people so that everybody admits that the solution lies in better management of water. Water is there, but there is practically uh, due to historic development of a green revolution in India, the initial focus was on those low hanging fruits where you just uh, created irrigation, you gave good seeds, fertilizers, mini kits, etc. Things happened within very small time. But this region, it needs uh, very homegrown and very typical solutions. These rivers are also transboundary rivers, so th they need altogether different approach. Mm, for the last 20-30 years, the governments, the planners or the local, one thing is the attention was not there, the governance was poor and second thing people didn't have uh, ready-made simple solutions because uh, what we call green revolution is a mini kit solution. You go to a farmer with a small bag, you, you, here is a fertilizer, here is a seed, here is a pesticide, you go and you will have a nice crop. These things are not working here, so things are more complex. We need to study those, those kind of issues and then come out with solutions which really are acceptable, which work uh, at different levels. So are you talking about behavior change at the farm level? Is that what we're, we're yeah, after? Yeah, that's right. Uh, when I make a presentation, we are working at, um, it's a kind of a matrix at different levels. We want to work at farmer level where we want to study what the farmers are doing, why they are doing what they are doing what's the best optimum thing for them to do, how they can be doing, uh, how they can say they improve those things and how the uh, institutions and policies they can be facilitated so that they do better things what they are doing. Then at the larger regional level and at the basin level, we want also again to study both the biophysical aspect, how this large Ganges machine, you can say it can made to work so that people harvest more benefit out of it. And similarly, you can say at the socio-economic essay, how the different governments, say India, Nepal, Bangladesh, can say they can sit together, they can uh, find a kind of a political altruism, or you can say they can sit at a uh, same table, and they have been discussing these issues, but there is, has not been a very good evidence-based research that there can be a win-win solution. Most of the parties, uh, they see each other with a kind of, uh, I can say, suspicion or something that if uh, something is done upstream, there will be not enough benefits for the downstream. Or you can say downstream people, they have uh, other benefits, you can say, that we do not have money. India is slightly a larger player than uh, the other countries, say like Nepal and Bangladesh, so it's a uh, considered kind of a big brother solution, something. Or we want to uh, put everything on equal fitting so that water becomes the central uh, point where everybody can benefit out of it. Now, you talk about evidence-based solutions. Part of the problem is that there's not enough data available, I believe. Is, is that an issue for you? Yes, sharing of data, especially for Ganges, uh, is uh, considered a kind of a bit of a secret, but uh, we are able, since we are not, uh, uh, can say, uh, studying the entire Ganges Basin, our project is for the eastern Ganges. We are, uh, can say, the part of uh, two states in India, Bihar and uh, West Bengal, then Nepal Thrai part and Bangladesh part. Uh, luckily, we have all the data access in Bangladesh. We have very good partnerships. In Nepal, we have done uh, very good projects and we have very good access. We are working with EC mode and uh, other things. And for the state level data or the level da data for Bihar and West Bengal is also now almost, you can say, we can access that one. So if we want to study the entire Basin, there are issues. But if we want to study parts of it, and with our uh, already going on good projects under Ganges Basin Development Challenge in Bangladesh, and they say, I think we, we should be able to do pretty fine over there. Now, you've talked about farming, you've talked about a new green revolution, as it were. What about economic development? India's progress economically is, is quite astounding at the moment. Surely that's going to put enormous demands on water supplies as places industrialize, as people's lifestyles change. Is that a concern? 
uh, for because uh, this part of India is not the kind of India which is generally projected in India. This India is uh, is a very different India. This is the most kind of a backward Asia. In uh, development um, parlance paradigm, it's called the world's poverty square. If you include Bangladesh, if you include Nepal, if you include the eastern part and Myanmar both. If this part, you can say this is you can say development uh, sector, they, they call the world's poverty square, where you have largest population and largest poor population. So this uh, region has been neglected or has been bypassed from the real development story of uh, um, the India as such. There are no very good vibrant systems coming up in Bangladesh. Things are working quite well. Even for India, they have now declared that this, this region shall be, we will do everything which needs to be done uh, to bring a second green revolution. Because there have been pressures in the western region, the water tables have been declining, the energy subsidy have become huge. So it is becoming hydrologically and economically unsustainable in the western region. To, so there is a, also a compulsion to reduce pressure from that region and uh, move a part of the production systems, especially cereals and other kind of things, to the, to the eastern. So agriculture can drive economic development in the east, do you think? Yeah, agriculture, not and uh, our uh, hypothesis not the cereal based, uh, the type of uh, pure agriculture, but a much more diversified agriculture, where fisheries, where horticulture, where livestock, where uh, all the high value agriculture can say this, this region is very famous for fruits and vegetables and fisheries and uh, all those livestock, dairy, etc., which can progress. So we want a different model. What um, we have been saying in some of the presentations that we, sh for developing this region, do not look towards the northwest, northwest. Uh, of uh, India, which is a more serial based model, but look towards Southeast, look towards what Vietnam is doing, look towards what uh, Thailand is doing, look towards what South Korea is doing. So those models where you have plenty of water, very small pieces of land, very intense population. So if you provide them with all the opportunities, along with markets, along with credits, along with uh, uh, infrastructure, this region can become a second, uh, um, similar to southeastern region, uh, can the kind of uh, scenario, the kind of good development which we say, which can improve the livelihoods, which can uh, reduce poverty in a very short span of time. So that's, that's what we're thinking.